Fantastic. Hey, um, this series is so close to my heart, Modern Family, because arguably the family is the most important concept on the planet. And uh, for all of us, we've had various experiences of what that looks like. Some of us, it's been quite broken. For others, less so. But it is the most important concept that God has put together to represent who He is like. And so this is so dear to Lisbon Eyes Heart. Uh, if you've missed any of the series, please go back and listen to it. We talked about how families breathe in week one. And last week we talked about how you can restore relationships. That was last Sunday. Today we're going to talk about a random number of practical things of how to do family life. So I want us to welcome to the platform two other couples who are going to assist this conversation who will be probably known to you, but let me introduce them. Come on up, guys. Come on, let's give them a hand. Awesome. And we have Mrs. Warren back from Bad Back. <laughs> Amazing. So we have, uh, we have here to my, I'm going to take a seat too. Why don't I take a seat? Here to my uh, to our face on is Paul and Mananon Snyder. Big shout out to our Almira location. Come on. Paul and Nanon have been married for eight years. And uh, in fact, I, I remember their wedding for a few reasons, but one particular reason. And uh, and that is because it was the Wimbledon tennis quarterfinal and Andy Murray was playing and I kept leaving the reception to get the latest update um, because he actually won that, went on to win the semifinals, went on to win the finals and was crowned Wimbledon champion that year. So we cannot forget. <laughs> we cannot forget. I, you had my full attention on that day. Uh, <laughs> it was a beautiful wedding, actually. It was a wonderful <laughs> wedding. Uh, two beautiful children. Jamie and Jada, and, uh, and he, he is si six now. He's six now. Jada, Jamie, two? Jamie, Jada's two. Beautiful kids. And we've got Peter, Ma Mano um, Peter and Monique, obviously from here. Uh, let's give them a hand. You've been married like 18 years. Yes, we were like seven. You were seven when you were married. <laughs> and uh, again, two awesome kids, Hosea. 14, serving on the media this morning, I think I saw. There he is. Uh, families that served together, last together. I oh, just made that up on the spot. Um, <laughs> here's a little thought for you right at the beginning. I'm going to go straight for the deep. Because um, I have someone, sometimes I, I have people say to me, I'm really concerned about my kids. I really want them to be following Jesus. And, and I, I look at them and go, well, what are you doing to set the example? Because I feel like you're very casual in your own faith. And if you're very casual in your own faith, don't be surprised if that casual nature runs in your children as well. If you're full on, if you're up every morning praying, if you're in church every week, if you're serving, don't be surprised if that's what happens with your children as well. Just a little, little tip. Um, <laughs> and Rose, who's 12. Yeah. Gorgeous. Now, she is 11. No, she's 12 uh, in a couple that, of weeks. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Sorry, Rose. I think Rose. she Just, loves you now. She, she, Little tip for you all, <laughs> always estimate a child's age higher until they reach about 35, then <laughs> estimate their age a little lower. Yeah. That's how it works, True. right? You'll have friends for life. <laughs> Fantastic. So just to um, get to know, so they can get to know you, uh, a couple of fun questions to start with <laughs> to kick it off. Uh, Paul and Anon, where did, where did you meet? Actually, in this building here in church, yes. And you two at home there can find your marriage partner down at church. Amen. And Peter and Monique, where did you meet? In church. Oh, there we go. You did not plan that, did you? No, no it was not planned that way. Um, okay, uh, a fun question. Uh, tell us. 
Tell us uh, a gift, Nanon, tell us a gift that Paul's given you that um, perhaps didn't work out so well. Hmm, let me think. Well, so when we just started dating, Paul's really into fashion. He brought me Converse uh, sneakers, all stars. Ooh. And actually, they were they are nice, but he bought them in the sale, and I felt a bit offended that he would buy me shoes because I would never buy in a sale. But later, I found out he buys all his shoes in sale. So I never pay full price for sneakers. At least 30, 40% percent off. Come on, guys. And all the men said, "Amen." Amen. <laughs> uh, love that. And uh, actually, Nanan, you bought Paul something too, right? Yeah, yeah, so also when we were dating, I bought him a watch, but he never wore it. I won't say the brand. I thought it was a cool brand, but not good enough for him. So. I want all the women to go, boo. <laughs> In our mirror? That's right. <laughs> and uh, Peter Mane, tell us, tell us a, a gift you've bought each other. Well, I thought, um, I, I didn't show Monique that I was in love with her, so... I gave her a photograph standard with ducks on it instead of hearts because I didn't want to show that I was in love with her. Ah, oh, subtle. So Very subtle. She wouldn't have guessed. Yeah. No, she wouldn't have guessed. No, you didn't guess. No, but it was, it was helpful if you would do that. Communication. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Okay. It's okay. okay we okay. have a... <laughs> All right, calm down. Calm down. This won't be a counseling session today. <laughs> so funny. I think we better move on. Uh, <laughs> marriage. Marriage things. Yeah. Hey, um, I was going to say we've got a marriage retreat <laughs> coming up. You reminded up, so. me. Yeah, yeah, marriage retreat. So, yeah, actually, too, um, you know, this whole well-being of making sure that we're well, body, soul, spirit, and in our whole area of our life. So we have a marriage retreat on the 23rd, 24th of uh, April, April coming up. Um, and you can register through our website. But we really want to do this because it's like we've had challenges this year in all our marriages um it'd be crazy to say that we haven't and what we wanted to do what was on my heart for this retreat so you can go away in a hotel or you can stay at home it's up to you and you you zoom in to us as a group and we give you reflection exercises that are really strategic to help you learn how to really communicate your needs and hear the needs of your partner. And we've been having so much fun with this all week, haven't we? It's like, are you hearing me? Am I hearing you? So it gives you an opportunity to say, I prefer hearts instead of ducks. Yeah, that so, sort of thing, so that you know. sort of thing. And, and Just, deeper, yeah. you know. I prefer <laughs> tulips instead of roses or whatever, you know, your needs are. But we've got needs, right? Marriage has got its we own needs. Uh, needs. We need to oh. understand each other's needs. And uh, so it's all about that. It's going to be really it's gonna be amazing. It's going to be great. Well, let's dive a little into the deep uh, for a moment. Maybe, Paul and on, you could kick off and uh, talk to us a little bit about one of the challenges you've faced in the last 12 months and how you've tackled that in family. Well, everything has been different. Um, suddenly, you know, the kids are at home all the time. No daycare, no school. No, and the non is at home all the time working. So, men cave gone. Um, out the window um, and having family around all day and it, it has been has been a little hard um, family time and you know I, I really felt God was speaking to me like embrace the chaos and because sometimes you know we, we keep on thinking maybe you know we want to go back to how it was right. but actually you know we need to deal with, with how it is at a moment yeah, really and um, yeah. you know and uh, those things won't change, but God is still the same. You know, yeah. yesterday, today, and forever. So he, he will give us strength to, to, you know, in the situation, you know. Um, yeah. And, in, you know, to, in the circumstances, it's so powerful, you know, to, to, to lean on God. And, um, you know, and it was, you know, I've, I've really found peace. And, um, yeah. Great. And for you? And on in, in, that, in that mix, what were some of the things you did to stay sane? Yeah, well, I, I did also find it, a, find, yeah, find it a challenge. Even like a few weeks ago, I just, because I'm working at home, and when, once you're done with work, you, you see your family immediately. So in the past, if I would work, I would also see my colleagues. We go out for lunch, and it's quite a stressful job, I think. So you need some relaxation against it, which I was really missing. Um, yeah, so we do go out uh, for walks, for instance. 
but I've also decided to work a little bit less. So on one day, every 14 days that my kids are in daycare, they can really just uh, focus on myself. <laughs> Right. Um, yeah, just going out and yeah, just really also being conscious. Okay, you know, I am stressed. What do I do to get rid of it, so to say? Yeah. Brilliant. So you've sort of sensed God's grace on it, but you've also done something really practical to shift your routine. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Peter and Monique, t talk to us about how your year has been and what you've done to adjust. So. <laughs> um, I think for us, it was uh, bringing structure to our lives because uh, we have uh, everybody, so, so the kids are getting older, so they have their own schedule. Um, Jose is in middelbare school, Rose in basis school, so they had different uh, schedules and also different needs. And we had, uh, yeah, we have a big house, mm -hmm. but not that big that everybody has their uh, own space. So for Jose, I didn't work to, wor to do homeschool schooling at his, room because that was his fun fun stuff so what we what we did what i needed to do was reschedule everything and make sure everybody was working focused on school or we uh, on our at, at, at our work um so we really needed to have conversations about okay what do you need uh, when do we take uh, when do we have a break then we have a break together because otherwise we don't see each other so we really needed to figure that out and with scheduling it and make a make a, we put it on the fridge like this is what we are going to do this week yeah. and that really helped but then but then you still need to change it the whole time so right. sometimes that was chaotic but so you deliberately talked it through made yes. sure you had a plan and understood each other yeah yeah peter have you got anything to add to that no, I think that's um, that's literally what we did. That yeah. helped the kids to really understand what can I expect from this week. But mm. at the same time, we saw that the pressure was on their life, and therefore, um, asking them what it was that they need really felt gave them the space to really talk on that s specific right. feeling that they had. So that was um, quite good. I think that's such a powerful thing to do: is to ask each other what is your need. As has been mentioned, we'll talk about that at the marriage retreat, but even with your children as well. Yeah. Mm. What are your needs? What, how can I help you yeah. at this moment? It's a yeah. really important principle. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how we need to hear God's voice in the middle of our family situation yeah. um, because sometimes just a word from God helps us take a breath and of, of strength and comfort. I think, Paul, you started to go there a little bit just then, but maybe each of you could Tell us, what, what one thing has God said to you in the last 12 months that you've have found helpful? Well, for me, um, yeah, so especially over this Christmas period, and yeah, when you don't go to so many places, I, I just really had some old things come up, like some old pain, and God really spoke to me about, how, you know, a home, sort of what is a home, and I just realized how I've missed that, yeah. mm. and God has been healing that, so... Partly. Um, so um, definitely just how life-giving a family is, you know, how family yeah. is meant to, like, to protect yeah. and, yeah, to give out also to others as a family that you're a blessing to others. But, yeah, just being so grateful. And, yeah, you can look, you can look at Instagram and all the perfect families and <laughs> realize that you're not, but it's not the thing. You know, we are together. We, we serve God. And, yeah. And just that, it, that it's life-giving. Very honest of you. Can I... Uh, can I just see a, a show of hands in Almira, even at home and here, if you found this year, because of isolation, it has brought to the surface cracks you knew were there. It, it's opened, it's, it's brought it, I'm going to raise my hand because it has for me. It, it's brought things that I knew were already weaknesses have suddenly come to the surface again because of the intensity of isolation. Uh, so it's no surprise, I guess, that families, relationships have had that added pressure uh, very good, thank you. What what has God said to you too, Peter and Monique? About the cracks, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I cracked it. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about your cracks. There were a lot of moments <laughs> where I cracked. <laughs> no, I think I was. I had those moments where I really was irritated because mm. the kids came down the whole time and then explained what they did, and then I thought, just go up. I I, I just want to do my work. 
Um, and I felt that irritation getting bigger and bigger. And that was when I started to like, okay, we need to schedule this one. This is not working. But, but then, and then I needed to invite God into it because I just thought this is not working. Mm. So for me, it was like, okay, you have to slow down, accept the situation. So this is, this is it. You just need to do it with what you have now. Right. And st start making memories. So we tried. So we tried a lot of things, just having fun together, and that was really that was really great. Yeah. But still, I must say, it's it's hard because because also you see all those great family in Instagram. It's just horrible. <laughs> if you are a mom, like you want to work and you have ambitions, yeah. you are, you have ambition to do stuff, yeah. your own stuff. And then, and then you see those great moms doing the creative things and going out the whole time. And I'm thinking, <laughs> well, and then they look also pretty. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Please post ugly me. shots this week. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we have a week of Hashtag all that bad ugly moments <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram? <laughs> yeah. I think that's uh, it's a really important thought. Be present in the moment. Yeah. Enjoy the moment. Yeah. Inject some fun. It's, uh, we are productivity junkies, and the reason why God calls us to have a Sabbath, to have a day off, is to de-junk yourself from that drive to always have to produce. Uh, can I really stop and feel okay about stopping and having quality time with the family? I th certainly, have, that's what God has said to us this year, be still and know that I am God. Trust. What's he said to you? Yeah, well, I, I decided the only way for my sanity was to get away, didn't I? So I actually went away for two days on a retreat on my own <laughs> on by the beach. It was amazing. And, uh, and I just got to that. Do you know what? I got to that point, I think a little bit in our marriage, but in, in, uh, in, in the season of COVID made me feel small. Like, my, you know, our world got small. My thinking got small. My faith for big things reduced uh, um, we wanting, you know, we're overseeing a regional directors for Europe, and we can't even travel. So everything's on Zoom, which makes things small. And therefore, I started to make God small, and then God small in our marriage. And 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 so I got away and just said, God, I need a word. And walking on the beach and seeing the horizon and the and the bigness, God just said, Remember how big I am. Mm. It was like the whole. And it was so simple. It was so simple, but it exploded in me. It was like, mm. God, I've, I had to repent and just go, God, I'm sorry that in COVID, when everything made me feel small, mm. I made you small and it enlarged me and stretched me. And I loved that, but it took me to get away. That's what it takes. It does, no, absolutely. <laughs> just to invest, yeah. Let's, let's talk a little bit about communication. Um, Ooh, yes. I think one of the values that Lisbon and I have always had, in fact, it, it, it caught me, I grew up with the Cold War. Anybody here old enough to remember that constant news item? There's going to be a nuclear third world war at any moment between America and Russia. And I grew up as a teenager going, if only I could sit down and talk with them. Surely there's a solution. And we brought that into a marriage. If, if only we could, if we could just talk about it, we will get through it. And so we've always had that sort of motto in our marriage. If we can just talk about it, we'll get through it. Um, so I feel like communication is such a, an important part of family life and creating that sense of vulnerability with your children too so that they feel they can also talk. Um, talk to us Paul and Anon about communication in your family and what you've learned about how you've communicated, what you do. Yeah. Well, um, before Nanon was working um, outside the house and um, in the office, and she, when she came home, I always asked, how, how was your day? And we would talk about it. And I do my best as a man, you know? It's hard sometimes. <laughs> but now she came from, from, you know, the man cave, which now is an office, <laughs> and um, she came down. And now, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't need to ask because you're home, so you're doing fine. <laughs> so now she's, she's asking me, don't you want to know how my day was? And I was like, yeah, you're home. And then I realized how important for her it is wow. to ask her how her day was. She's working from home, but still, she needs that moment, you know, and not just ask, how was your day? Okay, you know, 
uh, what are we cooking, but really ask her when she's talking, listen to her and you know, make eye contact actually and just um, connect. And then you, know, you see each other all day, but still those moments are very important um, you know, to, to give each other some attention and wow. actually look, look each other in the eye, make some connection and not just, you know, we're at home and we're like circling around each other but really um, trying to communicate. Brilliant, yeah. Paul. Um, if we don't remember anything, remember that eye contact. <laughs> uh, I think it's probably the most powerful um, part of communication. Uh, probably as men, maybe we're a little weaker at this, being attentive in our listening. Um, and eye contact does a whole lot to show that you're attentive. Because you can have eye contact and still be thinking about something else, so you're all good. No, I don't mean that. I mean, yeah, yeah. give her attention. We can tell really. that. We can actually tell okay. when you're looking at us and you're not. That's what I meant to yes. say. No, you, because can, when you've got eye contact, can tell, they right? can tell. <laughs> you're not really listening, are you? <laughs> Darn, she caught me again. <laughs> Peter, what, what, Peter, tell us, what, what have you learned about how communication works at home this year? I think the one thing that we both learned is that um, we just needed to... Um, yeah, how do you say that? Um, take it more easy on the pace on how we communicate. So what we did is, before COVID, we, we had a lot of things to do. And then, you know, you do communication, but it's more like task-driven almost. Oh, you know, I saw this, then let's discuss that, bam, 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 and you just go on. But we realized now with the mental pressure is that actually we needed to give more each other more breathing space and right. really listen to each other. And we do listen to each other, but take more time because what is being said is not... There is more to be said. We just right. need more words to express how we feel. So that's, that's what we did. And I think also in the general sense of this season, Monique also started to work less so that she could spend more time with the kids. Also for the same purpose, that she could be spending more, more time with the kids to be attentive to their emotional, ne emotional needs. So, right. yeah. Attentiveness in communication. Yeah. So cool. Just thought it was important to touch on that. Well, um, love for us to talk about... Uh, how we do life with others. Um, you know, we some often talk about the importance of friendships and make sure you've got people you do life with, but what about as a family unit? Um, so one of the things that we've always tried to do is see that our family unit is not a closed unit, but our family is part of a bigger circle. Um, obviously, the church family or our friendship circle, we've always tried to bring our children into the world of our friends. So they live an adult world, not just a child world. Uh, try to make their world bigger. Um, maybe talk to us a little bit. Lisby, maybe you could kick off. What, what have you seen as the benefits of us as families doing life with other families? Well, you know, if, if you know me, I talk quite a lot about vulnerability and, and, and uh, being, having a place where there's a safe place for you to talk and, and learn from other couples because you're real. And I think for us, um, having families around us and people, and sometimes not even in this country, but people that we can be vulnerable with, like take off our mask and allow them to kind of sharpen us and shape us, mm. maybe even ask us questions or us to them, and I think without that, you, you live so isolated. You live in a way that um, you, you, try, you try and do it on your own. Like you try and create everything yourself. Whereas we found so much inspiration by being around other families, but not just being with them, letting our guard down. Like mm. saying, you can see into me and we can see into you. Um, for me, if we don't have relationships as married couples where we can be vulnerable with that couple then we're missing, we're missing something that's absolutely vital to us um, becoming the people we need to be. Yeah, brilliant. Vulnerability so important. is so important. Yeah. Peter, uh, tell us about what y you have seen has been the benefit of your family doing life with other families. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, what we found um, pre-COVID was that actually the, um, yeah, having other families part of your family in that sense and speaking mm. into difficult situations has made that, um, well, yeah, within our family that's really helped solving um, some, some problems that we found. So that was really helpful. But what we did during COVID is that we, we tried as much as we could to s still see people 
because the no abnormality of the season is making that you know sometimes you just have so many crazy thoughts and then being together with people you know in a safe environment one and a half meter or walking outside just brings back the normality of life yeah. Right. Just brings back that sense of perspective on you know what the world is not going yeah the world is going crazy maybe but at least you know I'm hanging out with friends and we can talk about things you know that are important to us and we can bring it back into okay this is how we can look at it right so I, I really enjoyed love that, that uh, word perspective it just normalizes yeah. life when you're doing it around other kids other families and yeah. seeing their kids aren't so different to yours great moments misbehaving moments it just normalizes how about for you guys what, what's been the benefit of you opening up your family to others yeah um what i noticed with us because of course you're around each other a lot but if when you're with other families that you're both just more present right. so i see a, a side of fall that i don't always see <laughs> which is funny but um <laughs> but definitely um yeah but of course yeah it's it's such a blessing to spend time with other families but also single friends um but yeah, when you look at other families, you know, my son has a disability, but him being loved and playing with other kids is a real blessing for us. Oh. And we can learn from families, you know, or from people. And just by observing, just by spending time, you, it's just very enriching. Mm. And indeed, yeah, you, you get your sanity more back. It, it gives so much energy, I think. So good. Yeah. Wonderful. Paul, have you got anything to add? Yes, um, totally. I mean, like... Uh, we emphasize many times we're meant to do life with each other mm -hmm. and um, in the season it's so at, uh, attractive to do life on your own and I found it really powerful to invite people all the time and have people over for dinner um, and this week we had a guy over um, from our connect group for dinner and we were working all day we were tired the kids you know uh, we pick up the kids from school and we wanted to cook we didn't cook so we ordered food and then, then, you know, we met, he came to our place to, to have dinner and it was wonderful. And what happened was like all the tiredness, it all went away and it was so beautiful. And at the, night, at the end of we played a game, a board game. Wow. Uh, which one? Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride, which I won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. It's all about the winning, hey, Paul. Uh. But after, I mean, he just left before the curfew and I, I remember, I'm like, whoa, I feel good. I've been up... Uh, from 5 a.m. in the morning, you know, doing nursing work and then kids and everything, and I feel, I, I feel energized. Right. And that's the powerful thing about sharing life with, with people and with each other. That's so good. And I think there's a myth that says that introverts don't need it. Yeah. Because by definition, if you're an introvert, you get energized by being on your own. Uh, but we all, need, we all need a place we can be vulnerable in. We all need uh, uh, friends who can normalize us, who can help us feel like life is okay, it's normal. It's so it doesn't matter what personality type you are, we need others in our world. I'm just going to close with this psalm. Psalm 68 uh, says this. Um, in fact, let me read it to you. Because it shows us that God, uh, d God didn't just invent the concept of family. He himself used family language to describe himself. And this, this psalm says it all. It says, a he is a father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. So he describes himself as a father. How good is it to know that you've got a father? Whether you've had a good earthly role model or not a good earthly role model, God is the perfect Father who loves you, who's into you, who normalizes your life, who brings the best out of you and is a, is a safe place to go to. Because it says also he's a defender of widows. Now, you could replace the word widows with any person who feels vulnerable. So, a widow, vulnerable. But that could equally be a young child or some other person. He is a defender of of all those who find it hard to defend themselves. That's what family is. Family is that place that defends the moments in weakness. Is God in his holy dwelling? Isn't it interesting that the God who created the universe still talks about a dwelling, like a home, still loves home, even though he doesn't need a home, even though the entire universe 
is at his disposal. He still uses that word home. He feels at home. God sets the lonely in families. So family is the place where loneliness can be healed uh, if we do it well. It's very possible to be lonely in family. But I think there's some amazing thoughts and tips that we've just shared here that will help family be a place that's not lonely if we're communicating and doing life with others, if we're working through the obstacles. Uh, it will be a place where the lonely feel unlonely. And then he says, he leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. That is, family he leads out the prisoners with singing. Family is a place of freedom and a place of joy. And so if, if your home is not a place of joy, and I, I got to tell you, that's been, for me, one of the big fights this year is I'm naturally a fairly bubbly person. But that's been under attack this last year because life's not been a whole lot of fun. Uh, and so we've had to work harder at inventing fun, keep the home filled with freedom and fun and life because the Father, God, describes family as a place of freedom from feeling trapped where those who live there can sing with joy. Isn't it amazing that God uses that language to talk about himself. He's a father and he is family. He's into family. So just a final thought. Let's, let's give our devotion to what God has said is so important to him, our families. Let's learn the skills of creating, uh, being a safe person who's consistent, who's reliable, uh, just routines. Isn't it amazing? We've got all sorts of family routines that we have, habits. Um, I was listening to an interview the other day about, um, and the interviewer said, how many meals do you have together a week? And uh, one person said three, the other said four. And I was reflecting on it, and I would think we would have nearly seven meals a week, uh, nearly every night. It doesn't matter how busy we get. Um, it doesn't matter if I've, I'm home for 45 minutes and then out again. That family table has always been sacred to us because consistency, routine, builds a sense of safety and confidence um, and security in the family. Whatever you need to do to make sure the family relationships are healthy. What did I say last week? Say, I forgive you and say, I am sorry. Let's keep that sense of softness in the home alive. And you are going to do okay. Thank you, guys. Can we give these, so this a wonderful panel a hand? So just as we draw to a close, we're going to give uh, Ferry Hoffer um, a break right now. So when we do this, we're going to give Ferry Hoffer a break from the vertaling. Translating for us. He vertaled at this moment for us. But I, before we close, I, I, I want to lead anybody here who needs to come to Jesus or return to him a chance to do that. Maar voordat we afsluiten wil ik in ieder die terugkomt bij Jezus of die dat graag zou willen of zijn leven aan Jezus zou willen geven. And if you're at home also. En ook voor jou thuis daar. We're going to give you this moment. We willen je dit moment geven. To repair what you think might be broken. Om te herstellen datgene wat misschien gebroken is. Uh, let's go back to that thought. Laten we teruggaan naar die gedachte. That our God is a father of the fatherless. Dat onze God een God is van that he lives in a dwelling, a home. That he in a place woont as a thuis. Now today, when we use language of home, that vandaag wanneer we taal gebruiken als thuis en familie, and that word father or parent, and that word vader of ouder, maybe negative emotions start to appear. Misschien dat er negatieve emoties worden getriggerd. Maybe it's painful for you. Misschien is het pijnlijk voor jou. Maybe it's hard for you to imagine a God who is. Everything that maybe you've not experienced. Misschien is het moeilijk voor jou om God te zien en wat helemaal niet in lijn ligt met wat je hebt meegemaakt. But today, maar vandaag, he wants to reach right into that area of pain. God wil precies in die plaats van pijn uitreiken. And he wants to touch it. En hij wil het aanraken. Speak to it. Hij wil het tegenspreken. Say you're okay. Hij wil tegen jou you're zeggen. You're forgiven. 
Je bent oké. Okay, dat ding dat was done against you. Dat ding wat jij bent overkomen. Let me heal that. Let me lift that burden from you. Hij wil het voor jou genezen. Hij wil het van je wegnemen. That's what he wants to do right now. Dat is wat hij wil doen op dit moment. So can we close our eyes? Zo kunnen we allemaal onze ogen sluiten. En daar thuis ook. Just close your eyes. Kunnen we onze ogen sluiten? Because I want to bring a moment of healing to you. Want ik wil een moment van genezing brengen. The family is a broken experience for you. Wanneer familie zijn een gebroken ervaring voor jou is. Maybe in this moment you've got someone you need to forgive. Misschien is er in dit moment een persoon die je moet vergeven. So I want you to do something real brave for me. So ik wil dat je iets heel moedigs doet voor mij. If you know there's something that's broken in your family experience. Als jij weet dat er in jouw familieervaring iets gebroken is. Someone you need to forgive. Misschien iemand die je moet vergeven. So every eye is closed. I know this is a very personal moment. Ik weet dat het een heel persoonlijk moment is, maar terwijl alle ogen gesloten zijn. Maybe raise your hand for me. Zou jij misschien je hand omhoog willen steken. Dan mag je die naar beneden doen, want dan wil ik graag voor jou bidden. Too. Come on, why don't you just reach out to God right now? En daar thuis ook strek je gewoon uit naar Hem. Thank you for your vulnerability. Bedankt voor je openheid en voor je kwetsbaarheid. Is er anybody else you going? Do you know what? My family experience has been broken. Is er iemand misschien nog meer die zegt van ja, mijn familieervaring really is echt een it gebroken it. ervaring en ik wil echt dat God het aanraakt. Maybe you don't even know what you can do about it today. Misschien weet je niet eens wat je er vandaag per se in zou kunnen doen. To come in. En je hebt het nodig dat God daar binnenkomt. He can do that. En dat Hij de pijn wegneemt. Als jij dat bent, kun jij je hand omhoog steken. Oké, let's pray. Father, Father I ask today that the power of your Holy Spirit ik vraag vandaag dat de kracht van uw Heilige Geest these relationships. deze relaties zou genezen. I forgive. What ik, do you say in your heart? I forgive. Zeg in je hart, ik vergeef. I forgive my father. Ik vergeef mijn vader. I forgive my mother. Ik vergeef mijn moeder. I forgive my brother. Ik vergeef mijn broer. I forgive my sister. Ik vergeef mijn zus. Or whoever it might be, I forgive you. Of wie het dan ook is, ik vergeef je. In Jesus' name. In Jezus naam. Lord, I pray you bring healing. Heer, ik bid dat u genezing brengt. And restoration. En herstel. In the name of Jesus. In de naam van Jezus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Dank u, Heer, voor uw aanwezigheid. If you've never asked Jesus into your life, als jij Jezus nog nooit hebt uitgenodigd in je I'd leven, pray for you too. Could you just raise your hand for me? Dan wil ik ook voor jou bidden. Zou jij je hand you know today you need to come back to Him. Als jij weet dat jij terugkomt bij Hem vandaag. You're to be sure you're going to heaven. Of je bent er niet zeker van dat je naar de hemel gaat. Because I want to pray for you too. All you have to do is raise your hand. Put it back down again. Want ik wil ook graag voor jou bidden. And then we're all going to pray. So Steek je hand omhoog. At home there, if I'm talking to you. En daar en al meer als ik tot jou spreek. comes across the screen. Er is een banner die daar op het scherm staat. I raise my hand. Ik heb mijn hand omhoog gestoken. Just click that banner. Voor mensen die thuis zitten, kun je daar op klikken. <laughs> Ik zal het niet zien. But by you reaching out at this moment. Maar wanneer jij uitreikt in dit moment. You're making a step. Dan maak je een stap. And when you make a step. En wanneer jij een stap toward maakt. Jesus. Naar Jezus. He comes in and takes over. Dan komt hij binnen en neemt hij over. Because today you may be going, I don't know what to do. Vandaag zeg je misschien ik weet niet wat ik moet doen. I don't doe. fully understand. Ik begrijp het niet geheel. But I do know there's a God and I want to take a step toward him I want him in my world. Maar ik weet wel dat er een God is en ik wil een so stap naar hem toe zetten. That's you why don't you take a step today? Als jij dat bent stap maak een stap vandaag. You can raise your hand if you're at home just click that banner. Als je hier in dit auditorium zit kun je je hand omhoog steken en als je daar thuis zit dan kun je op de banner klikken. This moment wonderful. Fantastic. Can we all pray this prayer together? Fantastisch kunnen allemaal dit gebed samen bidden. Too, when you say this prayer with me. En daar thuis ook laten we het samen bidden. Goes like this dear God. Lieve God. I thank you for Jesus. Ik dank u voor Jezus. I thank you that he died for me. Ik dank u dat u voor mij bent gestorven. I ask that you would forgive me. Ik vraag u om mij te vergeven. I turn away from my past. Ik keer me af van mijn verleden. I give you my life. Ik geef u mijn leven. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Vul me met uw Heilige Geest. I thank you. Ik dank u. That today. Dat vandaag. I can be saved. Ik gered kan zijn. In Jesus' name. In Jezus naam. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Geweldig. Can we give these people a hand right now? Can we give these people a hand right now? right now? We feel it with you, May. Geweldig. Awesome. I'm just going to take a minute or two whilst uh, the stage is clearing. Thank you. Can we give uh, these guys a hand? Can we give these people a geweldig applause? Geven? Amazing. Thanks so much. So how good was that? Hoe geweldig was dat? There were so many avenues we could go on. Er zijn zo verschillende wegen waar we op kunnen gaan. Our main goal was to show you that even guys like us. 
En wat we eigenlijk wilden laten zien is dat zelfs mensen als wij. Man, doing family life this last year, we've had to work harder on it than Met het doel van het familieleven moesten we echt hard aan onszelf werken om dat te laten werken. Just a moment we're going to worship. In een moment gaan we weer terug in aanbidding. Hey, but I, I encourage you. Maar ik wil je aanmoedigen. To go back over this series of three. Om deze serie van drie weken om daar naar terug te Because kijken. Because if we can do our families well. Want wanneer we op een juiste manier ons familieleven kunnen opbouwen. We're, sh- we're showing our community. Dan laten we de mensen om ons heen zien. What God looks like. Hoe God eruit ziet. Because family life. Want het familieleven. Is a reflection of who God is. Is een reflectie van wie God is. Like. En hoe hij is. Next week we're going to launch into the series as we talked about well-being. Volgende week zullen we gaan starten met de nieuwe serie Can't welzijn. Wait for that. Ik kan er niet op wachten. Talking, talking about mental Health, we hebben het over mentale emotional well-being, emotionele we- welzijn. We're going to talk about vocational well-being, we physical het, well-being. We hebben het over het werkzame welzijn, het fysieke welzijn. Everyone flex your muscles. Dat je gewoon even je spieren aanspant. We're going to talk about financial well-being. We gaan het hebben over financieel welzijn. Because we want to look after you. Want we willen goed voor je zorgen. Make sure you're doing okay in this season. En dat het goed met je gaat in dit seizoen. All right, let's stand up at home there. Let's stand up in this room. Laten we allemaal gaan staan. Let's give God some worship. Let's give Him some praise. Gaan we bidden. Let them into your family life right now. Let them binnenkomen in your family life. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen.